Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this tech cube animation using Blender 2.8. All right, let's get into it. First thing we're gonna do is set up our cube. This is just my default scene right now. If yours does not look like this, make sure you bring in a cube with shift A and mesh cube, and also bring in a camera. If you wanna know the default values of my camera, here they are right here, so go ahead and copy those down. All right, so select your cube, and you're gonna to wanna to tab into edit mode, and we're gonna to wanna to subdivide cut this 25 times where I want 25 subdivisions so I have to cut it 24 times. So let's go cut it 24 times. So now we have 25 even subdivision cuts. And the next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is always kinda of see my wireframe. So if I step up here to our viewport overlays, if I hit wireframe, that will toggle it or I could add a nifty shortcut. If we right click on one of these toggles, you could go assign shortcut. I've already done one for my wireframe. That's control shift backspace for me. So go ahead and set one up if you want one and be sure to hop over to your prefer preferences and go save preferences. If not, when you open a blender scene, um, that shortcut will not be there. So make sure to save it after you've added one. Go to your cube. We're gonna hop over to the modifiers tab, add modifier, we're gonna go displace then we're gonna go mid-level to zero. Strength, we're gonna make that negative, and you'll see why in a second. And then I'm gonna add in a new texture, and I'm gonna hit this button right here to go to our textures panel here, and we could just as easily click down here, but it's nice and convenient to just do it from here. We're gonna go type, distorted noise, we're gonna go noise basis to cell noise, we're gonna go distortion to cell noise, and what I'm gonna do is crank up the size a little bit. I'm gonna go to about 0.8. Anywhere from 0.6 to 0.9 should be fine, but we could always tweak the values later, so these are not set in stone right now. I'm just gonna play with the strength a little bit more. What about negative 8.5? We're gonna add in our second modifier here, which is the remesh. We're gonna go from mode sharp to blocks. I'm gonna set up our octree depth to six. We could go higher, but you're gonna take a pretty significant performance hit once you start getting from uh, seven to eight or anything like that. So do watch out for that. Six should be perfectly fine for what we're going for. And the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is bring in our decimate. But before that, I wanna show you that we could get a little bit crazier with what we got going on here. Instead of having to go into our textures panel here and tweak everything, we could add an additional step to add a little bit more variety and give us a little bit more control with what we want. I'm gonna bring in an empty, go plane axis. I'm gonna scale that up. I'm gonna rename this. I'm gonna go F2. I'm gonna go displace texture handler. I'm gonna make sure I go back to the cube. And from texture coordinates here, I'm not gonna be in local. I'm gonna go from local to object. And then I'm gonna pick the displace texture handler here. And right now it looks like we have nothing that amazing going on and we just have to move this and tweak our texture values a little bit so i'm gonna set the scale down and that's already giving me more of what i'm going for so i'm about 0.19 here and now if i move this object up or i rotate it i start getting these really interesting um procedural patterns occurring and you can make some really cool animations like this uh, but for the purpose of this I think what we have going here is pretty pretty good I don't think I want to add anything or edit it a little bit too much maybe I'll just move this up a little bit let's see what we can get going here rotate it uh, 
that looks pretty cool to me. If you want to copy the specific values I have here, let me just show you. We have distorted noise, cell noise, cell noise here, amount of one, size of 0.19. Uh, and then for our modifier here, we have a strength of negative 8.5 uh, blocks octree depth six. And now what we want to do is simplify this mesh. We're going to add in our decimate modifier, set that to planar, just keep it at a default of five degrees. That should be fine. And we have a simplified tech block right there. That looks pretty good. And what I want to do is I want to uh, collapse my stack here of modifiers, but just in case I want to make any changes, I'm going to keep my default queue, but I'm going to keep this displaced texture handler. So I'm just going to duplicate this real quick with shift D. So now I have cube 001. I'm going to rename these. I'm going to go cube base. I'm not going to change that one. I'm going to rename this one to cube dot use. And I'm going to grab this texture coordinate. I'm going to grab the cube base Dash coordinate cube base, sorry. And I'm gonna go M, new collection, uh, don't touch collection. Hit okay, and I'm going to disable those because we don't need to do anything with it and we should be good to continue. So from here, instead of hitting apply on everything, I will hit Alt C, which for me is the convert to hotkey. Um, if it isn't for you, just go to F3 for search and go convert to and then go mesh from curve meta surf text and that should collapse everything for you. Perfect. So we have our cube that we want to work with and now we're going to get into setting up our scene a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and split my window in half like such. I'm going to go into our material editor on the top here from object. I'm going to go to world. And I think if I keep hitting shift F3, it would cycle through everything for us. Nope, not exactly. That is uh, cycling between something else. So don't keep, keep hitting <laughs> Shift F3. You actually want to click up here and go Object World Line Style. So we're going to be in World. I'm going to go into our Render tab at the bottom here. And what I'm going to do is make sure this is completely black. If I have Node Wrangler installed, I'm just going to make sure my background is selected. Hit Control T. It's going to bring in environment texture and a mapping and texture coordinates, uh, texture coordinate for us. If you don't have it enabled, go to preferences, go to your add ons and go to Node Wrangler and enable it. It really helps to um, speed in up your workflow, make things a little bit more efficient. So next thing I'm going to do is bring in an HDR. I just got mine from HDRI Haven. Make sure to check them out. They got a lot of free, great HDRs. The one I'm using is HDRs, Satara Knight AK. You can pick whatever you want, but this is the one that I use specifically and I've used it in a lot of other things because it has some really interesting colors. As you can see here, it's got trees, a bunch of bright lights, like in some sort of park and it has a starry sky up above, which is pretty cool. And what I want to do here is I'm going to bring the strength down a little bit, actually quite a bit, to about 0.1. Um, what I also want to do is I don't actually want to see it in my camera or my scene. So what I do here is go mix shader. And then we're going to want to bring in our light path. We're going to hook up is camera ray to our factor. So that is giving us all the lighting information from the HDR, but we are not seeing it, which is exactly what we want. Uh, we don't really need to hook up anything to the bottom here. And then we're going to go search. We're going to go volume scatter, and we're going to connect a volume to volume on our output. And you're not going to see anything yet because we have to go into our render tab here and enable volumetric. And then once we do that, we should start seeing something. Uh, which I have not yet, surprisingly enough. Oh, that is because I think it's just a current bug on the latest download that I have. I downloaded this on Monday. It is now Wednesday. So on the 13th, this is the build from the 13th. I noticed that if you have your mapping node hooked up to your environment texture node, you won't see your volume scatter. So now if I disconnect that, we will see the volume scatter affecting our scene. 
Uh, it's probably just a bug for now because I didn't have that a couple weeks prior and I'm sure it's probably fixed by now. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and save my scene real quick just in case uh, Blender crashes. It's a lot more stable now, but you never know. I'm just gonna decrease the density a little bit. And what I wanna do from here is make sure that uh, I have my cube selected, my 3D cursor is at the origin of that cube and I'm going to bring in a light, a point light, hop back into rendered mode. And now you're gonna see from all those um, cuts that we put in with our displacement modifier into the cube, we're now getting this really cool volumetric lighting effect, like lights are coming out of our cube, which is exactly what we we're going for and what we had in the video. I'm going to bring the density to about 0.2. Let's just keep it at a flat 0.2. I'm gonna to go to my point light, go to my point light tab here. I'm gonna bring the power all the way down. I don't want it be, I don't want it to be that crazy. I just want it to shine through a little bit. Let's go to about 2.5 watts. And we're going to play with the color. We're gonna make it something warm, like a yellowish orange. I'm gonna bring it actually down to about maybe 2.25. And that is looking pretty cool. Let's go 0.15 on the volume scatter. Cool. I think we can work with that for now. And now what we're gonna do is bring in uh, some music and use that as a cue for our camera animation. So we're gonna go up here to our workspace tabs and we're gonna go video editing, video editing. I'm gonna go shift A, go sound. And I'm going to bring in, um, my song, which is here in downloads for me, Slack, 40K, Hypecraft, Sci-Fi 2. Great. So this is about 904 frames. I'm sure I'm still using 24 frames per second. Let's just double check. Yeah, frame rate is 24. So I'm gonna end at about 912 to give me some uh, buffer room between the end of the song and the end of where I want my animation to be. So if I go back to my layout, and I hit space, perfect, everything is working. So let's set up the camera now. I'm going to hit zero to enter my camera view. And I think if that is not your default camera, you can hit control and zero, and that will make sure that that is your active camera in the scene. From here, what I did is I made my camera not perspective, but orthographic, and I scaled this up to about 29. And what I did was at one, which is the beginning of my timeline, I made a keyframe and then I went to frame 400 and I zoomed this back into about something like six, 6.4 is good. So now if we go to the start of our timeline, hit space, we're gonna get this almost dolly-like effect where it looks like we're moving closer to the cube, but we're actually just zooming in. Great. So what I also want is I want my camera, is I want the camera to rotate 360 degrees along its local X. So if I hit R, I hit Z, that's global, and I hit Z again, I am now in local. And this is really difficult to animate if you think you can animate it by hand. As you can see, all three of the values are changing at the same time. And if you try to um, uh, animate it manually, you're gonna get something very interesting. It's not gonna turn out the way you think it will. So there is an easy fix to this. I'm sure there's many solutions to it, but this is the one that I found. I just brought in an empty circle. I moved it up. I hit RX 90 to just get it flat and um, perpen I'm not perpendicular, parallel with uh, just the default view ground plane here where our axis is. And what I did was I selected the camera, I went to our constraints, I went to add object constraint, and I went to copy rotation. And let me just rename this really quickly. This is going to be our camera rotation handler make sure I go back to the camera. I don't want the X or Y rotation, so I'm gonna make sure I toggle those off. And I'm gonna select our camera rotation handler. 
And what this pretty much means is when I move the handler in the world space, which is just the default one, if I hit uh, RZ on it, you can see in the top left here that it is global. Uh, when I rotate it in the world space, global world space, it is going to affect the local world space of the camera. So now if I rotate this in the Z globally, it will rotate my camera locally in the Z. Perfect. So what I want to do is be at the start of my timeline, go to Z. I'm going to right click, insert a single keyframe. We're going to go to 400. And I'm going to type in the 360 in the Z now and just right click, insert single keyframe. So now from zero to 400, I should rotate 360 locally and I should zoom in. Great. So that is exactly what we are going for. Let me hop out of my camera. Let me go into rendered view here. And yeah, I think that's a good place to leave it off for uh, part one of this tutorial. Um, be sure to tune in for part two. We're gonna add uh, some better materials to the cube. We're gonna animate the cubes. We're gonna add an emissive tech wireframe and then we're gonna render everything out. All right, I'll see you guys in the next part.